In this video, I'm taking a look at a new AMP simulator plugin for iPad called Stark. Let's go. Here we are in GarageBand on my iPad. Now the Stark AMP simulator is only available on the iPad at this stage. It's not available for the iPhone. It costs $19.99 US to buy, which is $30.99 here in Australia, and that will vary depending where you are in the world. And while Clev Grant are not actually sponsoring this video, they did provide me with a demonstration copy, which is what I'm using to demonstrate here today. So what I'll do now is let's jump in and actually get to work and start demoing the Stark AMP simulator. Now, as you may know, GarageBand already has amp simulators built in. We can come into the amp here, we can dial in different tones, and we can dial in presets, we can add stomp boxes, pedals, and all of the rest. There's also other third-party amp simulators like Bias and Tonebridge and Amplitude. So what is different about Stark, and why should you consider adding Stark to your plugin library? Well, it's that word plugin, because Stark is an AUV3 plugin. And why does that make it special? Well, it means that you can actually add it to any track. So any instrument you're using, you can actually add it. So I'm going to show you what I mean by jumping into the virtual guitar here. So I'm going to tap on the guitar here and open up a guitar track. Now I'm in the classic clean, which you may be aware sounds like this. So, you know, it's a, it's okay tone, but we don't have a whole lot of control here in GarageBand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap on the mixer icon here in the top left, and then I'm going to tap plugins and EQ. Now, if I tap the edit button here and hit one of these plus I can actually add in a new effect or a new plugin here. If I tap on audio unit extensions, here are all of my AUV3 plugins. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna scroll down until I get to Stark and we're gonna tap on Stark. So this has now added the Stark amp sim to our virtual guitar. How cool is this? We can now tap on the Stark button there and here is our interface for Stark. We can start dialing in whatever amp tone we want. So let's just use a preset. So in the bottom right hand corner, we've got our overall sort of of rig presets here. So let's tap on that and let's put something interesting. Let's go to guitar effects here and let's go with something like the indie wet and see what this sort of sounds like. So now we get a completely different tone. So it has transformed our GarageBand virtual guitar because we've got a bunch of different effects that we can put on here. We can add in different stomp boxes here. Let's go in here and add a flanger to this perhaps. And we can just customize the sound to whatever we want. So I think that's pretty cool, but it doesn't end there because not only can we use this with a guitar, we can use it with any other track. Like you ever wondered what a, a peeper or a koto sounds like through a distortion pedal? Well, now you can find out because you can actually route all of these through the AUV3 plugin. So that's pretty cool. And I wanted to show you that first, but now it's time to grab the real guitar plug in and see if we can play some guitar sounds through Stark. So because we're going to be using the Stark Amp Simulator as our effect, we're just going to go to Audio Recorder and go More Sounds, make sure we're in Fun and Clean, because we just want a clean audio track to start with. Now, I've plugged my guitar in using my Tascam IXZ, which is a very handy little interface that we can use with our older iPads. You can also use a, a USB audio interface. I've got a heap of videos, and I'll link some of them up there and down in the description if you need to learn how to plug your guitar into your iPad. It's quite simple, but you do need some sort of interface. What we're going to do now is we're going to tap on the little guitar jack icon here. Now, the first thing I like to do is turn my input level down before I hit monitor on like that, and then dial it back up until we get, we get about the sound that we want there. So we're, we're good to go. What we can now do this is where it gets very cool. We're gonna tap on the mixer icon again. We're gonna to go to plugins and EQ. We're gonna tap the edit button, and now we can add in our Stark Amp Simulator. So let's tap on the plus button there. We're gonna go audio unit extensions. We're gonna scroll down and we're gonna tap on Stark. You can instantly hear that amp style uh, hiss that we get there. That is that is just part of using an amp simulator. It's gonna sound like that. Let's just give it a bit of a play. <laughs> That's coming through, it's sounding good. And in fact, we might need to just turn our. But already out of the box, it's sounding super cool there. So now what we can do is we can jump into Stark and we can start playing with these settings. So why don't I take you for a quick tour around the interface here? It's pretty simple, but it's a really effective layout. And then we'll dive in and we'll play with some presets and see what it can do. 
Now, like our other plugins, to turn it off, we can just press on the blue button here and it's disabled. So I'll just disable it while I take you through a tour of the interface and then we'll turn it back on and have some fun. So what do we have? In the top left corner here, we have our amp control. So we've got our gain knob and we've got our output knob there. We can then select our clean or our overdriven channel by selecting the little switch there. We can then go down to the bottom left here. We've got a boost function and we've got our standard bass, mid and treble EQ as well as a presence selector there. We've then got our preset button which is right here in the middle so we can tap on that one and we can dial in a preset of any of the actual amps themselves so we can just go yep we want to go with the British guitar B1 and then that will change our amp there let's explore the bottom left here this is our amp cabinet so we can determine how wide the stereo sound is so if we go all the way to the left here it's basically going to be like a mono speaker or we can actually widen it up if you want to have like a big stereo cab sound we can do that there and we can actually use this to use some presets as well if we want to actually change those by uh, using the presets over to the middle section here we can select the room size between small medium and large and we can select how much decay and how much of the room we want to mix into our sound using those once again we have some presets here if we want to use some preset sounds in the top right here are our stomp boxes or guitar pedals whatever you like to call them so we've got four slots here we just tap the big plus button and we can choose from one of these so we can tap in here and if we tap on a flanger we get a flanger there we can tap another one and so we want to then push it through distortion we can do that and again all of our controls each different pedal will have different controls that we can adjust and every one we can adjust there we can tap and drag them I think I did do that before. Yep, you can tap and drag them to a different position if you wanted them in a different order because the order of the pedals will be the order of the actual processing that is done on the sound. And there is a little power button you can see there. When they are red, they're turned off. So if you want to sample something, bring it into the chain and then take it out, you can actually turn them on and off like that. The only other real function we have here is in the bottom right corner, which is just to go to the boring mode. Uh, we won't worry about that right now. But my favorite part of this in the five minutes I've been playing with are these presets in the bottom right because we can tap here and now we've got all of these look we've got all these categories over on the left we've got overdriven distorted clean and we've got them for guitars keyboards and bass and then we can actually tap in here dial in a preset like that and it will actually dial in all of that for us so this one is brought in the american guitar 2 amp it's set up all the rest of it for us if we go to something like guitar overload or distorted uh, and we go to american metal you can see there it's dialed in it's got a compressor pedal Two, two distortion pedals and a booster in there so that's going to be a pretty epic kind of sound so there it is that's the interface but that's enough talking right we need to actually get down to playing and seeing what sort of sounds we get now, word of warning, before we turn Stark back on, it's a good idea to come in here and just make sure that we've got this set to something clean because if we had that to some crazy distorted tone, it's going to feed back and probably blow our ears off. And I'm definitely not talking from recent experience off camera or anything. All right, we're okay. We're going to uh, turn it back on and... There we are, we've just got a regular sound. We're going to go into Stark here now. Now let's play around with some of these. Let's take a little bit of a listen to something like a guitar overdriven sound. So we'll go in here, we'll select our British. You can hear that hiss coming in there, so that's quite natural. That's what you're going to hear with an amp. <laughs> and that sounds pretty darn cool. So... I'm a fan of that. All right, let's. Uh, I've got uh, Anders here ready to play some drums. So why don't we hit record and I'll just play a few chords here and we'll build up a little bit of a track here, shall we? We've probably got everything turned up a little bit too loud here. Let's just uh, let's just turn the monitoring off for a minute while we take a look and a listen to this. So we'll go into our our uh, thing. Yeah, okay. So we're actually not that loud here on the sound. I think just because I had it loud in my headphones and I was playing it loud. Let's just uh, listen to the guitar tone by itself. We'll hit play. <laughs> So 
But you, you can hear there that there's quite a bit of the drums in there behind. Now, this is probably more about the interface that I'm using here. When you're using a guitar interface, then sometimes it's going to pick up some of the other channels coming through. If I was using a USB interface, it probably wouldn't be picking up. And in hindsight, I probably should have done exactly that. But in terms of the guitar tone, I think it's sounding really cool. And obviously, we'll, we'll turn Anders down a little bit here so that when we record another guitar, that we won't get him in there as much. So now we can just tap on this and let's just duplicate out this track. And then we can come back into our microphone here and we'll turn our monitoring back on. So we've just got our same amp tone there because we've still got the Stark Sim up here in our plugins. Let's tap on it now and let's find a different tone, shall we? So we'll go in here and let's find an FX tone. So let's add like an FX tone to do some kind of like a lead part here. So what should we go with? Should we go with uh, the bright strat sound? Or no, what I did, bright stick. That might be a little bit too on too much on the soft side. What about this indie lo-fi? Everyone loves a bit of lo-fi. Yeah, and if we go to our back pickup, that could be cool. So what do we play? So what about Alright, let's play a bit of a lead part to go along with this. We'll hit record. Okay, so uh, yeah, that was a thing at a place. Let's uh, hit the done button there. We'll come back out here. I don't think I have my drums on. I could hear them a little bit in the background, but uh, let's just take a listen to just this track now. All right, let's bring it back with the other guitar here. So, yeah, forget the playing um, and the, the song selection. I'm really liking these tones. I think these are sounding really, really cool. All right, so let us duplicate this one now and create another track here. Now, the one thing that I've been playing with, and, and because I haven't had a heap of time with this, is that whenever I add a distorted tone, so at the moment, oh, we're not in the right spot here. We need to go back. This is the other thing. You need to make sure you're in the microphone itself so that monitoring is on so it can actually be heard. Now, I'm not going to turn it on here, but I have tried some of the distorted tones before, and the amount of feedback I get is quite insane. So it might just be my guitar and my interface and my inputs and my combo that I've got here, but I won't play those live. What I'll do is I'll record one of the distorted tones because they sound awesome, but that way you won't have to hear the feedback in at the start and that sort of thing. So I'll go away and record that, and then I'll come back and I'll show you what that sounds like. All right, so we've recorded that sound in here. And as I said, I've, I've got to work out a way around that feedback. If you've got some tips or suggestions or you've been using Stark, let me know how I can reduce the amount of feedback. But let's just take a listen to my lead part here with the drums that I just played. So very cool distorted tone. So there you go. There's a bunch of different things and I've got to keep playing around with this. If you'd like to see more about this, I just wanted to get a first look out there and to show you what this is all about. If you'd like to see more about this, then let me know down in the comments. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.